This entitled woman has asked to borrow a phone from a generous friend after hers gets stolen. When they agree, they are completely baffled after the entitled Karen decides to sell the phone. What crazy excuse does she make to try and justify her insane behavior? Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamped show. I was made redundant just after going on maternity leave. As I don't have a job to go back to, and not much energy to do the whole job hunting thing, someone decided it would be nice for me to have a new tablet, especially as my laptop is starting to act up. Someone I had been good friends with for just over 10 years, who we will call Sam, posted on Facebook that their laptop had caught fire, and being unemployed, they couldn't afford a new one. They asked if anyone could lend them an old laptop in the meantime. I told Sam that my laptop was unavailable, as it is a ton of private stuff on it, but if they just needed to get online to check for jobs and emails, they could borrow my other tablet. I said that it was a very basic entry-level Android, but it did the basics, including Netflix. So Sam accepted and we agreed to meet up in town that afternoon. After we did the usual, Hi, how are you? I brought out the tablet. A look of dismay crossed Sam's face. It's much smaller than I expected. Sam turned over the tablet and looked at the bright blue cover. Is this a kid's tablet? No, I told you. It was just a cheap one I picked up for traveling. Disappointed noises as Sam started switching it on. This is a bit slow. Wait, what the heck is this? The setup screen. I restored it to factory settings for you, so that you could put your own stuff on there. So all your stuff is gone? Yes. Can you download and log into Netflix for me before you go? Nope, not even a please. No? Why not? Because my partner and my mum asked nicely if they can use it, and I don't want to be locked out if too many people are using it. Do you even have time to watch it with the baby? This thing is so slow, it's still trying to set itself up. Once in a while. Do you still want the tablet? Um, yes, I suppose. It is better than nothing. Cue another distasteful look at the blue one. I would rather borrow your new one to be honest. It was a gift less than a month ago, so no. But I would take good care of it. I'm not lending you a brand new tablet that costs about 400 pounds. Please, I can't afford a new one. You know full well that I lost my job a few months ago and I can't afford stuff either. I am offering you the blue one. Take it or leave it. Fine, exclaimed Sam, like they were doing me a favor and not the other way around. I'll take it for now, I suppose. I was quite annoyed, especially at the lack of please or sincere thank you from someone I regarded as a friend, and I was somewhat relieved that she then cut the meeting short. I wandered off to do some shopping before meeting my partner at the bus stop after he finished work. I know Sam has a lot of other stuff to deal with right now, so I promised myself that if she apologized for her attitude, I would forgive her. Imagine my surprise when I saw not just him, but also Sam at the bus stop. Sam went pale as I approached. Hey, uh, I was just about to call you. Sam was just telling me about how you agreed to lend her your tablet. She asked if she could come over to collect it? Sorry, what? She said that you agreed to lend her your tablet, and I gave it to her about an hour ago. I can't quite remember the rest of the conversation from that point, as I was too appalled. She apparently thought she would get away with it, as she knew I was going to be busy for the rest of the day. I was so angry we just got on the bus when it arrived, and I forgot to ask for the blue one back. We are no longer friends. It's pretty sad with friendships like this, how you can be friends for so long, and obviously they bonded over something, and it can be destroyed in one instance. It can take years and years to build a strong relationship. So usually when people are hurt by a friend like this, they're not hurt just over the tablet. It's the fact that they're basically disregarding that 10 years of friendship. And in the end, is it really worth it for a tablet to be left completely friendless? So last week I ordered something online and was having it delivered. I was very excited and yesterday morning, the shipping company updated their website to indicate that the item was on the truck for delivery. Approximate time for delivery was 7 p.m. I keep my eyes peeled for my item. About 7.30, I noticed my neighbor was getting something delivered using the same company. So I went outside and approached the delivery guy and asked him if he had my package. He asked my name and tracking number. When I told him my name, he said, Oh crap, I delivered your package to the wrong house. But no problem, I will go get it back. So we go up to the door and knock and the neighbor answers. And when the driver tells him about the error, instead of saying, Oh sorry, I'll go get your package, he says, 
Well, it was delivered to my house, so it's mine now. And he slams the door. We stand there looking at each other in stunned silence for a few seconds, and now the driver starts pounding on the door. The guy comes out and tells us to get off his property or he's going to call the police. The driver responds with, oh, I don't think you're stupid enough to call the police. The guy takes out his phone and dials 911, tells the operator there are trespassers on his property and they won't leave. He closes the door again in our faces. We go to the end of his driveway and wait for the cops. When they show up, the driver explains what is going on and the cop says, I wish this was a rare occurrence but this happens more than you think. So the cop knocks on the door and asks very politely for the package and the guy responds that it belongs to him and that is the end of it. The cop explains that no it doesn't and give it back now or he will be arrested for theft. The guy laughs at the cop. The cop tells him to turn around and places him in handcuffs. At this point the guy's wife comes out with the package, which thank goodness they hadn't opened. The cop inspects the package and all is well. The cop places the guy in the back of the squad car and tells him that it is great he returned the package but he is still arresting him for theft and that he will have to spend the weekend in jail and he can take it up with the judge on Monday. At this point the guy is freaking out, his wife is freaking out and the cop looks at me and winks. After pretending to fill out paperwork in the front seat for a few minutes, he releases the guy and informs him that in fact what he did was theft as he accepted a package and signed for it when it wasn't in his name and then refused to give it back. I take my package and go home. About half an hour later there is a knock on the door and it's the neighbor and he is trying to apologize and I just look at him and tell him to get off my property. He tries to explain that, and I wish I was kidding, you would have gotten your money back by putting in a claim against the delivery company. My response was simply, when? I think many people grow up with the kindergarten philosophy of finders keepers without realizing that in most cases, the property still belongs to someone else. Especially if it was delivered to the wrong house and you signed for it. I'm pretty sure that's fraud to pretend you're someone else to receive their property. I am glad the cop gave him a good scare, but he was seriously going to steal that package. He was not going to give it back. So I don't know, you'd think that maybe something else could have been done so he learned his lesson. I guess his way he justified it was like, oh, well I'm not really stealing from my neighbor because the company will just replace it. It's like, okay, but then you're stealing from the company. Like, it's either way, it's still theft. On one of my previous jobs, I worked in a cafe in the rich people area that had a prize for workers. It's easy to earn points to get a prize. There were a total of eight cashiers and two take the same shift, so everyone gets the same shifts and fair chance to get free things. For example, week one of the month, I take morning shifts, week two, evening ones, week three, lunch times, and week four, closing time. The same is for drink makers, waiters, and bakers. Every time we serve a customer, we swipe our point card along with the order, so points get added to you. Again, same for all workers. Bakers swipe when a batch of pastries come out of the oven, and waiters swipe when a customer they were in charge of pays and leaves. There were a few rules for the prizes. To get a full lunch, two drinks, two pastries and a soup, you needed a total of 600 points by the end of the week. To get a breakfast, a drink and a croissant, you needed 500 points by the end of the week. To get a voucher for lunch, $20 plus food. In the same company's restaurant, you needed 1000 points. To the story, a few black women walk in talking very loudly into the shop and go to the menu wall to pick what they like. We are usually a very quiet place that serves mainly the local college students, mothers with kids that are playing in the small private playground, in across the road, and workers from the few big office buildings that need a little break or want to work out of the office, so yelling this loudly was disturbing most customers. They were loudly discussing how expensive our options are. After like five to six minutes, they finally come to the cash station and start ordering. Hello miss, nice to see you in our small but cozy place. What would you like to get today? We had to say this every time. Yeah, yeah, whatever. We want four macchiatos, three salads with papaya, and one baguette sandwich with pork, beef, and extra pickles. All right, got it. Four macchiatos, each $3, three salads with papaya, each $10, and a baguette with pork, beef, and extra pickles for $10 as well. Your total will be $52. If you choose to make a Monday menu with a baguette without pork, but with chicken, you'll save $3. $52? This is outrageous! I'm sorry, but... We want a discount now. I'm sorry, I can't discount you unless you have a loyalty card with 1,000 plus points. I told you this place is not cheap, let's go to McDonald's or whatever. 
No, the baguette looks so good. I want it. Coworker, who is also the manager of the people working in the front. Excuse me, what is the problem here? Choosing bagel one, two, and three, scream profanities at coworker and try to get a discount while I serve another customer. I swipe my card and write down that I have a total of 783 points. What is this? Pointing at my card. Point card for employees. What do you get? Something extra by the end of the week. Like food or what? Yeah, food and drink or drinks. Give it to us. I'm sorry, I can't. They cause a scene and we argue for 10 minutes about how customers should receive our prizes and how they are always right until a nice customer calls the neighborhood police officer and they get escorted. It's more common than you'd think for people to walk into a food place and they want really nice food, but they don't want to pay a lot for it. It's like, well, why do you think it's the really nice food? It's going to cost more. You get what you pay for. If you don't want to pay for a lot of it, you're going to have to deal with cheap food. If you want high quality food, you're going to have to pay more for it. Now, the whole point of a loyalty card is that you are a regular customer and then because they appreciate you regularly attending, they'll give you something for free. The fact that you don't even want to purchase something there once, and then you demand the points of the employee. If loyalty cards were able to ever have negative points, I think you would be the first person to ever get them. A solid three-year-old friendship went to crap over a phone a few years back. I have always been a phone breaker, so when I have some extra money, I buy Android phones just in case, you know? Also not in the US. Fast forward to a fateful day where this friend, let's call her Sari, gets mugged, phone stolen, lives very far away from her family, is in college, really needs a phone. I had a spare and she knew. So she asked about a week after the mugging happened. All that week I'd been hearing her sorry story about not communicating with family, being behind in college and so on. I lend her the phone and tell her to give it back as soon as she gets a new one. She agrees. I think that will happen soon, as she has a good job. I know this for a fact. We were both working in the same company and I knew that she was well above my salary and got juicy bonuses she boasted to me. I know she could afford to pay me back or, you know, give me back my phone. Months pass and she still hasn't given it back. This girl is living her best life, buying expensive stuff, clubbing, traveling, you name it. So I ask for my phone. To me, that was enough time. Three months or four have elapsed this far. She must have had the chance to buy herself a new one. Besides, mine was acting up and I needed to have a spare just in case. The conversation goes like this. Hey girl, Sorry, could you return my phone sometime this week? Hey girl, sorry, I can't give it to you, so no. No? Why is that? I sold it. You did what now? I sold it and bought myself a new one. Yours was too basic. So you could have just returned it. Anyways, the phone was $120. I still have the receipt. I can show you. You'd have to reimburse me that. No, I don't. The phone was a gift. No, I lent it to you. I told you and our other friend in common that was there. I mean, we could just ask her. No, I don't feel like this is fair. It was a gift. No, it was a loan. I need another phone, sorry, ASAP. Well, buy one. I wanted the phone I gave you. I had the phone to spare and in case something like this happened. You were using it and it was crap. I had to sell it and pay extra to buy a good phone. I want my money. Sorry, you're being unfair. What? I've been having a hard time and you're making it worse. You've been clubbing like a maniac girl. Just pay up, that's all. I won't. You're trying to rip me off over a gift. You're being a terrible friend. You're not saying that. You know what? Just pay me. You're a bad friend. Just pay me. No. She walks away and we didn't speak for the remainder of the morning. I contacted the third friend and asked her. She confirmed my recollection. It was lent, not given, and flat out called the other girl a liar. She then told her to pay up some money she owed her, and this girl, sorry, stopped talking to either of us, accusing us of being insensitive and so on. It was tense at the office for a while, and then she got herself fired for stealing in the company. Never got my phone or my money back, and neither the other girl nor me know whatever happened to her after being fired. Even if you thought someone gave you a phone, wouldn't you want to check with them first before buying a new one that maybe they want their phone back? Maybe they want to sell it? Because otherwise, why wouldn't they just give you the money to buy a new phone? The reason they're giving you the phone is because they're lending it to you. Like, shouldn't that be intuitively obvious? I guess the giveaway is the fact that she got fired for stealing from the company. So she obviously knew it was lent and that was her lame excuse. But my question is, was this like a preemptive thing? 
thing and she's like, hmm, I'll sell the phone and buy one that I like and then I'll just tell her I thought she gave it to me. Or did she just kind of do it without thinking and then when she was confronted, it's like, oh, I gotta come up with some excuse now. Some people just don't think things through and those are usually the people that, well, they get fired. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.